In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to factorize trinomials that have common factors. Okay, so um, remember in the previous lesson we spoke about what trinomials are, and the reason I'm calling them basic is that these ones we're doing up till now, they're still relatively easy, but it does start getting more advanced as we progress into the different lessons. Okay, so um, if you have, so, so when you get a question on like a trinomial, for example, uh, maybe it goes 2x squared, take away 4x, take away 6. Before you even start thinking about um, making brackets and all of that, I always, 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 whenever you're doing any type of factoring is or factorizing, is to always think about, is there a common uh, factor that you can take out? That is the step one of any factorizing. So for example, I'm not gonna do this as a whole example, but you could see that each of these terms, you could factor out a two. So you would take out a two in the front, and then you would be left with x squared over there, two x over there, and three over there, okay? Then what you would do in the next step is you would then go ahead and factorize this as a trinomial. So that's what we talk about when we say a common factor. So here's our first example. So look at the three terms. At the moment, it doesn't even look like a trinomial. Remember, with a trinomial, only two of the terms are supposed to have variables. But this one, there's a variable there, there's a variable there, and there's a variable there. So you might think, ah, oh, this isn't a trinomial. And that's correct, it's not. But what did we say? We say that whenever you do factorizing, always take out a common factor first. So. The number 3 can go into 3, 15, and 108. So we can take that out as a common factor. But there is also a common factor of p. So you can take out a p in the front because they all have a p, okay? I mean, this one's got 3, this one's got 2, this one's got 1. So you always take the lowest number, okay? So we're going to make a bracket now. And then all that you do is you just see what's left over. So in this first term, there would be a p squared. In this next term, there would be 5p left over. How do I know that? Well, the way that you could check is if you had to imagine yourself multiplying these two together, it should give you the original, and it does. 3p times 5p is 15p squared. And then um, 108 divided by 3, definitely using my calculator for that one, is negative 36. So there we go. Now what happens is that you're not done. Now we can realize that, hey, this is a trinomial. If you haven't watched my introduction les lesson on trinomials, it's the one just before this. Quickly go check that out. Um, but this is now a trinomial. Um, it's only two of the terms have variables, and the exponents, this exponent here, is exactly double this exponent over here. That's important. Right, so now what we do is we are going to factorize this trinomial. So the way that we do that, remember, is you take this number here, which is 36, and you're gonna think of all the different ways that you can multiply numbers together to make 36. For example, one multiplied by 36, um, two multiplied by 18, three multiplied by 12, uh, four multiplied by nine, six multiplied by six. Then what you do is you look at uh, this number over here and you try to see which of these combinations can give you a five if you plus them or minus them. So for example, if you took one and 36, can you ever make a five using a 36 and a one? Well, you could say 36 minus one, but that's 35. 36 plus one, that's 37. So you're never gonna get to five. What about this combination? Well, 18 plus two is 20, that doesn't work. 18 minus two, that's 16, that doesn't work. What about these two? Three times 12, I mean three plus 12 is 15. 15 uh, 12 minus three is nine, so that one doesn't work. So this isn't working, this one didn't work, this didn't work, but all of a sudden, if you look at four and nine, could that ever make a five? Yes, if you say nine take away four, that gives you five, and that is what we are looking for. So what you then do is you go to your next step where you make two brackets, and then you're just gonna say the nine is a positive, because it's positive over here, and then the four is a negative, so nine take away four. Then you just take the p, and you put another p. That's it, that is how, so in the previous lesson I showed you how to do the trinomials, 
In this lesson, we're just learning how to take out a common factor first. That's all that we're doing. Um, it's trinomials where you have to take out a common factor first. All right, so here's our next example. So um, always, please remember this. Whenever you get to a trinomial, always see what can I take out. So for this one, we are going to take out uh, a common factor that can go into this number, this number, and this number would be a 5. Okay, so you take out the 5 in the front, and then what would you be left with? You'd be left with b squared plus 7b, because 35 divided by 5 is 7, and then this would be negative 30. Okay, so make sure that that part right there makes sense. Now we have a trinomial. So what we do next is we look at this number 30, and we think about all the different ways you could write that. So that would be 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 multiplied by 10, uh, 4 doesn't work, 5 works, 5 multiplied by 6, and I think that's about it. You might say 6 multiplied by 5, but that's the same thing. Now what we do is we're going to quickly scan through these sets of numbers to try find the number that could help us make 7. So to save time, you can maybe pause if you want just to check it out, but it's going to be this set over here, which is a 3 and a 10. So to make the number 7, you would say 10 take away 3. 10 take away 3. So then what you do is you make two brackets, and then you're going to say b and b, and then you're going to say uh, plus 10 and minus 3, because 10 take away 3 is 7. Okay, so that's the end of that example. Here is our next one. So first step, always make sure that there is no common factor. So in this one, you could take out a 3 from all three of these numbers, and then you'd be left with x squared, 5x, or negative 5x, and then for this part, we're going to have a negative 50. So then what we do is we take the number 50, and we go make all the factors, or we go write it out. So 1 multiplied by 50, 2 multiplied by 25, uh, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 works, 5 times 10. Uh, what else? 6, 7, no, 8, no, no. So that's it. Okay, so then what you do is you scan through these numbers. So those two, then you look at those two, and then you look at those two. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make this number over here, which is negative 5. So the only way you would be able to do that, you can't use those. That would never work, and those would never work. But you could use these two numbers over here. And then to make the number minus 5, you would say, if you say 10 minus 5, that doesn't work because that gives you 5. But if you say 5 minus 10, that does work because that would give you negative 5. And so what we then do is we make two brackets, and then you're going to say 5 take away 10, and then you're going to say, and this one's a positive, and then you're just going to say x and x. There we go. Let's do one more example. Now, I like this example because it's got some B4s in it, some B3s. And so, remember, step one is always going to be take out a common factor. So, the common factor for this number, this number, and this number would be a 2. Because the number 2 can go into all three of those. And then here we have a B4, here we have a B3, and here we have a B2. So, you can always take out the lowest number. So, that's B2 open up a bracket, and now you just fill in whatever's left. So whatever's left would be b2 for this part over here, right? Then it would be negative 4b. How do I know that? Well, if you had to multiply these two things together, it would give you negative 8b cubed. And then over here, you'd be left with negative 21. Actually, just that, eh? There would be no b's left over. To make sure that you've done it correctly, what you might want to quickly do is just multiply these all back inside and see if you can get back to there. Then you know you haven't made any mistakes. Now, on the inside, we have a nice trinomial. So what we do, like we always do, is we take this number 21, and we're just going to go write it out. So 1 times 21, uh, what else? 2 doesn't work. 3 times 7 would work. 4, 5, 6, no, that's about it. So then what we do is we try to make this number on the inside, and so that's a negative 4. So the way that you could make negative 4 is by using these two numbers over here. Now how would you do that? Well, if you say 7 plus 3, that's 10. If you say 7 minus 3, that's 4. If you say 3 minus 7, 
that's negative four, and that's what we're looking for. So we can then make two brackets, and we say positive three, negative seven, because three minus seven, and then you just say B and B, and that's it. So in this lesson, we looked at how to do factorizing of trinomials where you first have to take out a common factor.